software programmer at John Deere. He's also the uh, Ward 3 City Councilman in the City of Waverly. Casey Clunder is here too. He is the uh, Waverly Shell Rock baseball coach. He also is a transitional teacher at, uh, uh, with, the, with the district. Works, in the, works on the Brentwood campus with the Alternative High School. Yeah. All right. And we have sports editor uh, Tyler Puslowski and he is the token Cardinal fan here. <laughs> so Let's first of all talk about uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday night's game. Uh, Cubs, four. Pirates, nothing. Uh, Jake Arrieta, 11 strikeouts and a complete game shutout. Uh, four, four hits. Unfortunately, two hit batters. So, uh, uh, Wes, uh, Casey, what do you, uh, you want to uh, talk first about the, what your thoughts on that game were? Yeah, I mean, for me, the game was just awesome. Uh, it started off, couldn't have started off any better with Fowler getting a hit and then Stealing second, Kyle Schwarber driving in with the double, or actually was a single, but mm -hmm. uh, start couldn't start off any better. And it's like once you got that first run, you felt that the game was almost over because Arietta hasn't given up a run in 16, 18 innings. Or actually, actually, it was 30, <laughs> 30, 31 consecutive scoreless innings uh, for for, uh, Air, for yeah, Arietta. Yeah. So I mean, once that happened, it was great, and then. Uh, once Kyle hit that bomb into the river, it was just awesome. And then Jake, um, to me, Jake didn't really quite have his best stuff. I mean, he was he was off. He was wild. It was not the best I've seen him in a long time. Yet he still only gave up four hits and had eleven strikeouts and a shutout. So it's pretty awesome. But mm -hmm. and yeah. what do you think, Casey? Yeah, second half of the season, Jake Arrieta has been the best pitch of the game. Yeah. And you knew scoring early, like you said, Wes. Scoring early was going to be the key. Um, getting a few early, then. Then Schwarber hits a home run, Fowler hits a home run. Four runs is going to be enough for, for Jake Arrieta to win most ball games. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the, the, thing is, the thing that I took out of it, even though Arietta did not have his best stuff for the fifth and the sixth innings, the way he worked, worked himself out of it, especially when he got the, the, the bases, lo it was bases loaded and one out, uh, and a ball a hot smash right to uh, Russell that, that ended up loading the bases. But then... Uh, another another hard ground ball right to Russell turns the six four three to get out of that inning, and then and then uh, uh, another another uh, the twin killing in, in there too, uh, but uh, but then but in those fifth and sixth innings, uh, he hits hits a batter in the hand uh, on a high pitch. He hits a batter in the shoulder area. I started getting a little worried because uh, if if Arietta is not is not on, now he's usually on. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of times when you see a Cubs pitcher lose their stuff, it's usually game over the other way. And when, But when he got those double plays to get out of those innings, uh, I breathed a sigh of relief. And then when he took that, wore that pitch on his butt, yeah. and, and the bench is cleared, <laughs> and I'll say, uh, <laughs> man, it's on now. And I was talking, and of course, then I was uh, talking to my dad about uh, what, uh, what was going on. He was having a little uh, uh, health issue bef before he had to leave. But as, as I was talking to him, Arietta still sold second base. How how weird is that? A pitcher who just got plunked decides that he's going to add a little insult to to that, add insult to insults with with stealing second. And that's just who he is, though. He's. You look at him and he looks calm, but inside he's a fiery guy. And you can tell that when he when he got hit by the pitch, 
I mean, and you don't want to mess. He's not a guy I would mess with. I mean, just say it that way. And uh, he stole second, and then they put the camera on him, and you could see that the uh, the pitcher at the time turned around and looked at him, and he just said, "Let's go!" Like he's like, he was like, you know, it's on. Let's go. You don't have to see that from the National League pitcher. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. You know, with the steal second, I'm not sure Joe Madden would have wanted that. Put your pitcher in harm's way, but obviously, he had felt like he could take it. So. And, and, and you got you got to think that maybe Joe may have uh, uh, given him the go ahead, uh, just 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 to maybe uh, rub it a little salt in the room there. I would guess Arietta won on his own. I don't know if you want your your big money ace <laughs> yeah, going to the playoffs yeah. running around the bases. And but when the bench is cleared, Sean uh, uh, Sean Fernandez uh, Fernandez or Rodriguez. No, Sean Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Rodriguez uh, yeah. who started at first base, but he was pulled for a pinch hitter uh, when the when they fell when they fell behind four zip. Uh, he comes out and he and he looks like he wants to get at Arietta for uh, bas basically throwing those two HBPs and then and then uh, talking at his pitcher. He he was showing throwing a punch and then and then eventually got got uh, ejected from that game. But before that he was officially ejected, he was shown on camera <laughs> the turning the Gatorade bucket into a punching bag, like a heavy bag and. And uh, and of course you 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 guys have all probably seen those those memes and there was a and somebody created a, a Twitter handle at Pirates Gatorade Cooler <laughs> and it got about thirty five hundred uh, follows uh, so what, what uh, uh, looking at the outside perspective what what uh, what did you see out of that uh, Tyler well, first of all I think um, if I'm not mistaken the Gatorade bucket won <laughs> 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 um, you know I thought I knew it was gonna be a close game. Arietta is the, the guy is the best pitcher in baseball right now, um, you know, and you know he, he did look like he was kind of playing with fire there. You know the, the Pirates have a really explosive lineup. Uh, Pedro Alvarez is a Cardinals killer. He's been a Cardinals killer his whole career. Guys up and down McCutcheon, you know all those guys. And then what really stuck out to me was how Arietta was able to get those double play balls. That was huge. Uh, and really, you know, watching this team play, nothing really gets in their way, you know. They don't back down from anything. Uh, and that's, you know, that's credit Joe Madden, uh, you know, Theo uh, Epstein uh, in the front office. You know, I've been telling people for the last couple of years now, as soon as Theo got there, I was like, well, watch out for the Cubs. You give them a few years, and they will be good for a very long time. And that's how it's going to be. But what, what really was frustrating was seeing that in two or three weeks, two of the top three teams in baseball will be eliminated. Definitely, yes. And yeah, that's I'm really, that you know, it, it, what do you do there? Do you make it a best out of three? If you do that, you know, you're pushing into November uh, playing baseball. The team in the divisional series, you're going to be sitting for another few days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you hear Major League Baseball um, just come to terms saying that, hey, this is the reason why you need to win the division. Um, yeah, yeah, the commissioner said that uh, before the AL game on ESPN. Just the hard part is, you know, watching at least one of the two, uh, you know, one team out of the top three in all of baseball go down. Yeah. But, you know, the Cubs, they had it, you know, <clears throat> the, the, that young offense. I mean, those are just kids out there, and they're just having fun. It's, it's fun to see, even if you're not a fan of the team. Yeah, and of course, uh, you mentioned the youth. Uh, Chris Bryant definitely going to be the rookie of the year. I mean, he he led the league or he led the league amongst rookies in uh, RBI and and home, uh, home runs uh, like second in hits, and also led, led in another statistical category. I can't figure that right off the top of my head, but yeah, but he's uh, of course uh, the, a lot of the uh, early season stuff revolved around him because. He didn't. He didn't break Mesa with the major league club. They sent him to Des Moines. Really, didn't even send him. They didn't even get to Des Moines. Uh, a couple weeks in, he was uh, brought up to uh, brought up to Chicago after the th after 13 days in, so that uh, they could basically uh, keep his rights for another year. Uh, but that's that's uh, another another story. But then. <laughs> Uh, Addison Russell, he's he's been he's been great, especially when they uh, Joe moved them from second base to shortstop and moved uh, first bench Starlin Castro and, and then moved him to second base, 
and also they mentioned Kyle Schwarber. He started the game and started the se season Double A Tennessee. He came up during uh, uh, during a couple of the AL games, uh, games at right. AL Parks at the yeah. DH. Yeah. And he ends up making he ends up staying with the team as a left fielder and catcher. Uh, and during that during that early early point of Schwarber's time up here, he became a verb. Yeah, you you've got Schwarber. <laughs> Talking about those, talk about those bombs, and that uh, yesterday they were in the in Wednesday's game. Uh, MLB stat uh, Statcast estimated Schwarber's home run at nearly 450 feet. And that practice got into the in the Allegheny Arena. I was just wondering, which will make it to St. Louis first, the Cubs as a team or that baseball going down the Allegheny and Ohio <laughs> rivers? Going back to the youth there, you know, I think we expected to see Chris Bryant this year mm -hmm. after the contractual thing early in the season. I think we expected to see, you know, some of the young arms and things like that. They've been thrown out of the bullpen. I don't think we expected to see Schwarber as early as we did mm -hmm. and, as, and him being as effective as he's been, mm -hmm. especially late in the season. You know, he comes up a catcher. He's, he's, I watched him play last year at, at Iowa. You know, he's, he's from, he's, uh, went to college at Indiana. Indiana. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's only two years removed, a year and a half removed from college. He played college baseball in 2014. So mm -hmm. I don't think we expected him to burst on the scene quite like this, and I'm not sure we expected to see Addison Russell this early too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you also have Jorge Soler, which yeah. is yeah. actually one of their better bats when he's healthy, and he he didn't even play last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's another big bat that they have. Might to... might see him uh, might see him in right field against some of the lefties uh, yeah. that uh, St. Louis would be uh, throwing out. So, but uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so you got Soler. He, uh, like uh, like mentioned, those big three, uh, Javi Baez. Uh, he 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 hadn't been uh, he'd been like broke broken through uh, late last year. This year, not so much because he had some in injuries uh, uh, down in AAA. And but but he got healthy by the time of the September call ups, and he he performed pretty pretty well during during the month of September. And all, a lot and a lot of these other guys that the the. the that you mentioned these these guys are the hashtag hashtag we are good as, as they go but uh, last winter uh, as I'm covering uh, the uh, Bramer County Board of Supervisors uh, the, uh, Bramer uh, one of the supervisors uh, Dewey Hildebrandt is a Cardinal fan but he always uh, chides me a little bit about the Cubs but he but he was saying the, during the winter or last fall into the winter before this is before Madden, they, Joe Madden left the the Rays. He was saying that the Cubs would be much improved coming into this season. Um, he, he and he said maybe uh, could be a contender this year or next. I was saying, and I told him, well, I think maybe they've got another year or two to gel or to mature. And then Joe Madden. Besides, he, he wants to leave the, the t Tampa Bay Rays and to do other things. Then all of a sudden, Theo and and uh, and, and uh, Fred, who the other, the other guy with him. Jed Hoyer. Hoyer. Jed Hoyer, yeah. Theo and Hoyer, they, they go after him, sign him, bring him in. Cubby Bear uh, press conference. Hey, uh, everybody want a shot and a beer? <laughs> but he, he brought this... He brought this low. He brought this attitude, this loose attitude, that helped these kids. And, and you got an infield of like twenty six and under. The oldest is Rizzo at twenty six, uh, but but you have all these kids playing high level baseball. I don't know if they would have done it under Renteria. I don't know if they did, would have been able to do it under Swain. But under Joe Madden, he no he he. He's able to flip the right switches. And he's got flexibility in this roster right now. You know, against lefties right oh, now, gosh. he can go Baez, you know. And right now with the way they're playing defense, he moved Bryant to the outfield last night. He put Lestella at third. Yeah. He can do all kinds of stuff. This is a Joe Madden-built roster. Mm -hmm. It is, definitely. There's so much flexibility, like you said. I mean, Kyle can play. He can play catcher if they need him mm -hmm. to. But they obviously have Montero as a left-handed hitter. But you put him in right and left. Chris Bryant has played every single outfield position and third 
He's he's and, a very he, good third baseman. And he had a, and he even had an inning or two at first base. Yeah, so I mean that's insane too. Is just to, he's gonna walk away with rookie of the year regardless. But to have a rookie come up and play four or five positions is pretty insane. Um, and then you mentioned Baez can play second, short, third. Um, it just goes on and on with the flexibility that that, that he has and. I, I liked what he did last night. I mean, he put Listell in as an extra left-handed bat. He didn't really do much as a hitter, but um, it didn't hurt. You know, you might as well maximize what you can do out of that, and he does that every game. He's switching guys around, doesn't, and those players all love it, and mm -hmm. it's what keeps them loose, and it's one thing that I've always, as the year has gone on and they keep getting better and the winning streaks kept getting longer, you know, the second half of the year and stuff, it's just you start... You know, the kids are believing it, but yet there's no pressure on them. You can really tell they're having fun. And so, you know, it's kind of like this, This once they got in, they they could pull, you know, like what the Giants did last year and go all the way. Mm -hmm. And there's no pressure on them this year. Now, the next couple of years, like you said, everyone always thought, well, they're going to be good next year for sure. And then the next four or five years after that. I mean, the pressure is going to start building as the years go on because if they don't win, because then it's going to be, okay, you guys have been good now for a while, but this year it's all brand new and it's fresh and they're just playing and doing really good. You mentioned the fun. Last night's celebration did not look like a play-in game wild card celebration. <laughs> yeah. that, was was seven, that, was, that, was, that was a game seven celebration. Yeah. 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 And that just shows the atmosphere in the clubhouse right now is yep. fantastic. Yep. And, and of course, that doesn't help to have uh, the manager being uh, uh, endorsed by Benny's Beverage, Benny's Beverage Depot <laughs> in Chicago. That's uh, for those of, those of you who don't know, uh, the Benny's Beverage Depot is a is a is a Chicago-based chain of liquor stores that sponsor uh, several uh, sponsor the telecast for the Cubs on uh, Comcast Sports at Chicago, as well as uh, uh, they they sponsor a leadoff the, the leadoff hitter. Uh, they give money to charity if the leadoff hitter gets on base. Uh, but then they also consider to be the, the official champagne provider for yeah. for the team. But uh, they also but, sell tons of cigars, which they had last night too. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and your and your cigar aficionado, did did you light up a couple uh, last night? I had one pre and post, but I saved, saved a special one for the post game. So yes, there you go. perfect. Yeah, of course, I'm I'm not a smoker, so I wouldn't. Have, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so getting back to uh, what was. What were the thoughts of the priest in the preseason? Um, I thought that this this team could be close to five hundred. I did not see a ninety seven win season. I did not see the third best uh, record in baseball. Uh, what What about you guys, uh, uh, Casey, Wes? What What do you guys think? What What were you What did you think before the season? Yeah, I, I you know, me and my brothers and. My cousin, we, we talk all the time about Cubs and every everything sports, but uh, we were all pretty much the same. I mean, everyone knew we were going to be better. Everyone knew Chris Bryant was going to be good. Um, I mean, he just hit, what, 60 home runs or something in the minors. I mean, so mm -hmm. you knew he was going to be good. Um, you signed John Lester, so it's like, okay, we have a top-of-the-line guy now. You knew Arietta was good, but then he turned into, like, Bob Gibson? Yeah, absolutely insane since June or whatever it has been. Uh, he's been good all year, but, I mean, since June, no one's touched him, which is insane. And then, as you know, I would say, too, I mean, we all thought, okay, we're, we're going to be over 500. We might have a shot at the wild card here and there. Nobody thought 97 wins. I mean, they they have the greatest differential in baseball, the most, you know, switching from wins yeah, uh, from that, last year to this year, so there's a, gra a graphic during uh, Wednesday night's game uh, that TBS put up. It, it was like a plus twenty four, plus twenty seven win differential. That uh, win improvement over mm -hmm. over twenty fourteen to twenty fifteen. Uh, what, what what did you think preseason? And Theo's always talked about. There's always that year when you when you go from being sellers to the deadline to buyers yeah. that you're gonna have the big jump at some point. I think we'd all agree that it came earlier than what we thought. We didn't, like I said, we didn't expect Schwarber to come up and do this. I didn't expect him to be our second hitter, yeah. you know, right now in most lineups. Um, we didn't expect, I, I didn't expect Addison Russell to come up and be our everyday shortstop second half of this year. I thought it was a next year thing, 2016 thing. 
Um, so we're getting some productivity. We're also getting some productivity from the back end of the rotation here, the second half of the season that we didn't get in the first half. Hendricks has been a lot better. Um, Hamill down the stretch has picked up, and Heron announced his retirement, and he actually pitched well his last couple starts too. So we're getting some better productivity from the back half of our rotation. So I knew we'd see the big year when we went from, from sellers to buyers at the deadline, but I didn't think it'd be this year. I probably thought it was going to be next year. Yeah, Heron, uh, of course, Heron was one of those uh, deadline time of the de time of the year deals uh, ends up being the number five five starter for the for, for the Cubs coming over from Miami uh, and then of course uh, Jackson also another yeah. another guy uh, acquired during the during the deadline era and uh, um, the relief pitcher uh, uh, sometimes I sometimes names escape me so that, uh, uh, the, I can't think it was yeah, yeah. Big, yeah, big, big guy. Yeah, big hard. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, another reliever for yes. come, come over from the Mariners. Yeah. Uh, Which uh, they all they all helped. I mean, Jackson had a couple outstanding games down the stretch. Yeah, he was a yeah Fernando yeah. Rodney. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, thank yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, sometimes they just pop right back. But yeah, Fernando Rodney come uh, comes over as as a, one of the setup mans for and Ron Doan. He had a, he had an up and down year. He had like early on he had some some issues and then. So Mott took over at the at the closer for a while, or they went by committee. But then Rondone found found his slots and were and he was able to get about thirty some saves, not not quite like uh, 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 Melanson for Pittsburgh who had fifty one. Good thing they got up early, the Cubs got up early in that game Wednesday night, so they wouldn't have to worry about Melanson. Uh, it was like fifty one and fifty two on uh, for the Pirates on. On the season, but uh, they get up. The Cubs get up early. They stay up, and uh, and they don't have to worry about uh, the Pirates back end. So, the uh, so then yeah. So yeah, they get ninety seven wins, ninety seven sixty five. They uh, the game behind the Pirates for the, to the for the top wild card. They almost caught them if if the Reds could have just won one more game. <laughs> come on, come on, Cincinnati. That's a uh, uh, yeah, they could have just won one more game. They would have had the tiebreaker to, to host the wild card game, and they only have a three games behind Tyler's Cardinals for the division. Uh, so, uh, what, what were you? Uh, what, what were you ever worried that the Cubs could catch you guys? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, I guess a little bit, but the way that Mike Matheny manages the Cardinals, uh, you know. They just went out there, and yeah, they struggled for a little bit there. I think they had a little bit of struggle in uh, late August, September. Then they were able to hold them off. I mean, there was a couple series there in Chicago that got ugly, got real ugly. Um, kind of reopened uh, rivalry, because um, before, I think all of you can agree, the rivalry was more of a fan, fun rivalry instead of a heated rivalry. But I think now everyone's going to see, starting tomorrow night, that this is actually a legit rivalry between mm -hmm. two really good teams. They're going to be good for a long time. Um, but, you know, I didn't expect the Cubs, like you guys did, to be this good this early, uh, you know, especially in the toughest division in baseball. Yeah. It's such a young lineup. And one of the things that I guess would be a question mark is with all this youth on the big stage in October baseball, because it's a different animal mm -hmm. almost in every sport. I mean, you know, the state tournament, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's different. Um, how that plays out, I have no idea. Uh, but... You know what? Even even if they don't go all the way, you, you got to be sitting there thinking like, ninety-seven wins this year. My goodness, I don't think anybody expected that. No matter if you're a fan of the team or not. Mm -hmm. I think some of those acquisitions are going to help in the postseason. Mm -hmm. You know, David Ross, yep. and yes. John Lester, guys that have been through it before, Jason will help on the field, but also help off. Yeah. And now, of course, uh, uh, we mentioned that uh, uh, the the uh, National League Division Series. So uh, the one of them, the what should be the uh, one-four matchup in the seedings. Uh, uh, St. Louis against Chicago. It starts Friday. Uh, Lester will will go. It's uh, who who's uh, the Cardinals throwing out? John Lackey. The, Lackey. The cool thing about this is they both pitched uh, in 2013 in one of the World Series, the Boston Red Sox. So, yeah. Uh, both guys are workhorses. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a one-nothing game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, Adam Wainwright's back, but he's coming out of the bullpen. Carlos Martinez is done for the year, so yeah. uh, you know the Cubs have a good rotation. The Cardinals, they they scratch and claw. I mean that's mm -hmm. that's who they they don't have. 
you know, I guess Martinez was their was their number two, and, and he was a kid that a lot of the times let his emotions get the best of him. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was very animated at times. Uh, uh, but I, you know what? Yeah, game one, and you couldn't picture a better you know starting two. That'll be at that'll be on at uh, five forty five p.m. Central Central Time on on TBS, and then game two will be Saturday. Uh, Cubs will be sending out uh, Kyle Hendricks and St. Louis. Uh, Jaime Garcia. So Garcia has really turned his career around. I mean, that guy, you know, um, was hurt for, for three years. Uh, and he signed this huge contract. And there was a lot of talk. Do we trade the guy? Do we cut him? But we were, we were, you know, the Cardinals were on the hook for so much money in this contract. Uh, they finally gave it a shot. And, you know, it, uh, it, it's turned out to work pretty well. And then game three, uh, we'll have Arietta back on the mound for for the Cubs. That will be in Chicago, uh, and St. Louis will be thrown out. Uh, I believe it is going to be Lance Lynn. Okay. Now, it, 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 it's either Walker or Lynn. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that game will be Monday uh, in Chicago. Now, and uh, behind the camera, we have our editor uh, Nelia Demitrova taking a picture of the four of us. <laughs> So, anyways, uh, uh, so what what uh, what do we think about this about this series? I I'm expecting this going to be uh, if we thought that that the Pittsburgh game uh, with especially with the benches clearing in the seventh inning after after area got hit, we might see a we we might see a few a few more. Uh, in fact, I think uh, uh, Steve Levy from ESPN tweeted that the first fight of the hockey season because the hockey season started uh, on Wednesday as well. First fight of the hockey season came during a baseball game, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, but it, it, that's true. <laughs> it, but uh, uh, St. Louis did have an eleven to eight edge on the Cubs in the regular season this year, uh, but the Cubs took four of the last six of uh, two or three in Chicago, two or, two or three in St. Louis, or vice versa. Yep. Uh, but but it, it's uh, it's going to be a good series. Um, what do you think the keys will be, Wes? Yeah, the keys. Uh, you know, first of all, I thought it was crazy. I didn't even know this, but I guess it's the first time the Cubs and Cardinals have ever met and played in the postseason. Yeah, it, yeah. It, so for how I mean, they've been obviously the Cardinals are in the playoffs more than the Cubs, but well, it had to be they, the first time before um, they added this second wild card. Yeah, it, it used to be you win your division, you can't play a divisional opponent in the divisional series. Mm -hmm. So the only time they would have been able to meet would have been in the championship yep. series. Now, I'll bet it off. Yeah, it's, it's a lot different play. I mean, there used to be only four divisions right. and four teams, right. so the, a lot of things have changed in baseball in the last 20 years. But And the Cubs and the Cardinals have always been in either the same league or same division. Yep. Pre That's pre -divisional, yeah, yeah pre-divisional, they just go up against each other in the National League. Uh, between 1969 and, and uh, 98, I think it was when they went to three divisions, they, the Cubs and the Cardinals were both in the East Division, uh, as well as the Pirates. So, so even if it was under the, 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 90, er, be the pre-98 arrangement, the Cubs, the Cubs, Cardinals, and Pirates would all be yeah. in, this, in the same, er, like one, two, three in the old National League East. And in that situation, only the Cardinals would have been in the postseason. So, and and then the and then of course before they added the second wild card a few years ago, uh, uh, the Cubs would have just been a little short. Yep. So, but but uh, yeah, the, uh, but getting back, what do you think the 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 key to me, you know, the be? keys. It's a lot like uh, the Pirates game. I mean, it's gonna the Cubs have three solid starters. It does hurt, I would say, a little that Arietta had to pitch last night just because. He can't go right away in the Cardinal series, so he's only he's going to pitch game three. Probably only pitch one game in the series, um, but Lester's a pretty dang good uh, guy to have having your leadoff starting pitcher in game one, and then in game four if needed. Uh, so, <laughs> but so you know, I'm, I I feel confident in the pitchers and Lester uh, Hendricks has done good, like Casey said during the, you know the, especially the last part of the season. You got Arietta in Game Three. If the Cubs can, if they can win one of those two in St. Louis, you know, with Lester or Hendricks, and then have Arietta coming home, I mean, that's going to be sitting pretty good for that. Um, that's your ideal situation. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then with the young guys, you know, I, I, I just, 
you, I just feel good about the Cubs. I mean, I just do. I just, uh, you know, we talked about how Soler didn't even play, and he's another big bat in their lineup. So no matter who gets thrown out there to pitch against them, they're going to have an offense that can combat that. But, you know, I would agree the first game, just like last night, I'm expecting to be a low-scoring game. Um, you never know, though. Sometimes those turn into the game. Right. You never know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would expect low-scoring games mostly, most out because, you know, there's good pitchers on both sides. There's obviously good players on both sides. Um, I feel a little better maybe than earlier in the season because the Cubs have did take four out of six, you know, kind of down the stretch. Uh, more of what the team's lineups are like now and how the Cubs were playing better. So uh, should be a pretty even matchup, but hopefully the Cubs will pull it out. And that's, what, that's what I'm going for. I'm thinking more uh, uh, what will happen in the middle of the lineup, especially when, we, when we're talking uh, Bryant, Rizzo, maybe Montero, uh, and of course uh, if Schwarber does does play, of course he's been only been playing against righties of late, uh, how, how some of those guys handle themselves against uh, against some of the, those Cardinal pitchers. Uh, basically uh, what, what the bats can do, they've got to score runs. Uh, they, had a, they struggled a lot of times, run around third, less than two outs, coming down the stretch. Uh, they didn't have to really worry about it too much on Wednesday night because uh, uh, Schwarber had the had the had the uh, op, big opposite way single to score uh, the score Fowler in the first inning, and then he had the bomb uh, uh, under the Allegheny, and then uh, Fowler also had a homer. So yeah, those two guys, yeah, the, those the, the top of the lineup, I, if they can set up very good, and if the uh, if the guys in the middle can bring him home, that'll be the that'll be the edge. Uh, it also depends on what uh, Car the Cardinals can do in their in the middle of their lineup too. What do you what do you think, Casey? Well, I think it I think it's a pitching matchup thing from game to game. I think we talked about the flexibility earlier. You're going to see a lot of different lineups, and the thing that Joe Madden's willing to do is he'll switch in the fifth inning. You know, if, if the Cardinals go right or left late yeah. in the game, you know, here comes four or five different guys. You know, we haven't even talked about Coughlin yet. Yeah. And he was our three-hitter for yeah. most of our year. And you talk about defensive flexibility. He played second base during the longest winning streak of the season when we go back-to-back -back series with the White Sox. So he's at second base. So we can do all kinds of things that, you know, unfortunately for us, the first game we're going to have to do without Montero's bat, at least early on, because we're going to start David Ross, the personal catcher for John Lester. So... You know, that's one of those things we'll have to keep an eye on if, if Ross can, can hit Lackey, although he caught him quite a bit in Boston, which probably, you know, has an advantage there too. But um, So we have some flexibility. We can do some different things in the middle. Um, uh, but, yeah, the, as far as our offense, scoring early has been the key to our two long winning streaks. You know, the one in the middle right after the all-star break and the one here late, um, scoring early when Fowler, Schwarber do their thing early on, the Cubs are very tough to beat. What do, you th what do you think the key the, the, on the Cardinals and uh, what do you think the Cardinals need to do in order to hold off the Cubbies? Well, you know, the Cardinals haven't been healthy all season. Uh, Matt Adams, Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina. I mean, so many guys have gone down, um, and they're just getting Yadier Molina back who tore a ligament in his thumb. He's good to go. Uh, he controls that pitching staff. I don't think a lot of people realize how vital, I mean, you hear about it, but just watching him catch, He's going to be a key for the Cardinals. Uh, you know, Adam Wainwright will come out of the pen. He won't start, but he's coming out of the pen to pitch a few innings here and there. I don't know how much they'll use him. Um, I think, you know, the younger kids, Stephen Piscotti, Tommy Pham, really turned on, and Jason Hayward, who really struggled, you know, all the way, probably a little bit after the All-Star break, finally starting to hit the ball. Um, you know, it, you know, the, the Cubs are going to be they're going to be emotional. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to come in high energy. I think the Cardinals just need to play their game. You know, the Cubs, you know, like I said before, they haven't been, you know, in 2008, right? But not, but the, not, these, not these, these Cubs. Cubs. The, you know, what did you say, the oldest guy was 26? Well, that's, 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 that, that's, that's in the infield. Uh, that's in the infield. You know, these, these kids are young. You know, I mean, this is October baseball. I'm not saying it's going to be bad for them, but, you know, a lot of the Cardinals, you know, they've experienced this before. Uh, I just think they need to, to, to play their style of baseball and not worry about, you know, the stuff on the outside that they can't control. But the, th but the thing about how the Cubs are right now, Joe Madden has them going, thinking game to game to game. They, they, are, 
they aren't uh, thinking about uh, game three back back at home. They they're gonna be focused. They're gonna be focused on Friday, and then Saturday, like they were just focused on Wednesday. And and each each game has its own uh, it has its own flow and everything else. He has the kids focused on the game they're playing right then and there. They they forget about the the twenty the twenty five game win streak that they had. They forget about the three or four game losing streaks that they may have. They just try to get everything focused on one game. They it's like one game seasons for for these these kids. They have like one hundred and sixty two one game seasons. Now they're gonna have five one game playoff games, so a playoff series. So basically, he's got these kids in the in the right mindset, and that's how they won the ninety seven games. Because they they are, they, even though they're young, Joe's got them focused. Uh, let, let's like take a quick look at the uh, the at the other playoff matchups. Uh, and the other the other National League Division series is uh, the New York Mets against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, uh, the, the 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 Dodgers have the home field in 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 that series. Uh, Mets have been uh, a little up and down. So have the Dodgers. Uh, 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 what do, you, what do you think about Mets-Dodgers? Yeah, you know, mid-season I thought the Mets were dead. I mean, the Cubs swept them, I think. Yeah, they won all and, six games. Uh, yeah. dropped them below 500 time, yeah. or something, and yeah. I, I thought the Mets were done. And then next thing you know, they win the division. So, uh, But the Dodgers are really good. And you got Granke and Kershaw going in a five-game series. I find it very hard that someone's going to beat those two guys enough times in a you know, five-game series. So... Uh, I got to go with the Dodgers in that one just because of their pitching. Those two guys alone, they're the top two of the top three best pitchers in the National League are on the same team and going to start back to back. So it's that's hard to beat. So so you say Dodgers and I would say Dodgers and four. I'm going to go. I'm going to actually go go Dodgers and five because uh, I I think that uh, either great uh, one of those two pitchers is going to falter in New York. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. You got that long flight too. I mean, that's you know, even with the travel day, it's a long flight. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. last year, you know, even when the Dodgers were playing the Cardinals, the Cardinals mm -hmm. somehow get the Kershaw. I have no. Don't ask me how. I have no idea. And after he was so dominant the way he was, it was just crazy. Uh, you can beat the Dodgers, mm -hmm. um, but but winning at their place is really hard. And I think winning in New York is going to be equally as hard. But remember, Arietta Mino hit the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium back on August the thirtieth. Uh, what, what do you think, the Dodgers-Mets? Yeah, you, you got to figure Kershaw's going to turn around his postseason woes from the last couple of years. I mean, law of averages are going to get him back to where he is in the regular season. Obviously, the postseason is a small sample size. So uh, i got Kershaw coming back. Granke's been dominant here this season. and So I, I'd have the Dodgers in four. And how many how many games do you have? I'll take the Dodgers in five. I just think it's going to be too hard to win in New York. But then again, you know, we'll see. I think it's going to be another good series. All right, so so four, five, four, five, but all Dodgers. Uh, so and of course we're going to so so must we going to say Cubs? Uh, how many? <laughs> uh you know that's a tough one. Uh, if it goes five, I won't be able to sleep, and I'll probably lose a lot more hair. Uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> for my sake, I'm gonna say Cubs in four, just because I do not want to go to a fifth game. I just don't want to. For sweep, <laughs> three. <laughs> How can I follow sweet? Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get one out of two in St. Louis, mm -hmm. you know, and that's probably gonna have to be less. But you feel like you're chasing here with these first two games with Arietta not going until three. You feel like it's one on two. Lester's our two. Hendricks our three. You feel like you're chasing those first two. So somehow we gotta win one out of two there. You feel real good about Arietta coming back on Monday at home, um, and then we'll probably go la back to Lester at home. I gotta go to the Cubs, but I gotta go all five. Okay, but look at it this way. Even if the Cubs lose the first two games, you still can't feel – I mean, you still got to feel somewhat good because you get Arietta in game three and then back to Leicester for game four. Both those games are good. Yeah. No. So, uh, so then I assume you're going to – but you're going to say you're going to go with the Cardinals? Uh, I'm going to go with the Cardinals in five. In five. It's definitely, so. definitely not going to be a sweep, but I'm going to go with the Cardinals in five. All right. Let's switch to the American League quick. Um, the, the Division Series in the American League, we have the – 
uh, Texas Rangers going to uh, going to play against the uh, the Toronto Blue Jays and the American League Wild Card winner, the Houston Astros. And who uh, who ever thought that the, the Houston Astros would be in the American League for one? Yeah. And 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 the, and the Astros were like the Cubs were recently. They were very yeah. very low. Huge the team. Astros beat the Yankees on Tuesday night's AL Wild Card, uh, and they'll. And they'll be facing the uh, West, the West champion uh, Kansas City Royals, and of course the Royals had that big uh, run last year until they got to Game Seven of the World Series. The Giants, the Giants beat them in, in Kauffman Stadium. So, uh, what do you, what, what do you see about those two American League series? I think they're both really interesting. Um, you know, I, I like Texas. Um, not a huge fan of the Blue Jays, but you know the Blue Jays kind of came out of nowhere in the middle of the year too. I mean, they Texas has been hanging around, hanging around, and they had, they had to win that last game to win by one game to win their division. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Yankees led the East for the longest time, and then all of a sudden the Blue Jays just caught fire and, and blew past them, and the Yankees could never catch up. It'll be really interesting. Uh, I personally want Texas to win that. I just do, just because uh, I don't really care about Canadian baseball teams. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one. There is only I know, one. We're down now. to one. So uh, I just think it'd be cool for baseball to have Texas in it. Uh, you know, the Rangers, it's a big state, and they have a lot of fans, too. Uh, the other series, I think, is also interesting because the Astros have been playing really good, and Kansas City. Um, was on fire earlier in the year and have slipped a little, you know, like the Cubs actually ended up with a better record than Kansas City. And for the longest time, Kansas City was always ahead of them. So Kansas City's kind of slid back a little, but they were really good last year and they're really good again this year. So th that series is another, that one's going to be close. And I, I really don't know. I, I would, I'll go with Kansas City just because uh, they're the, they won the division. Mm -hmm. And I think, they're going to want to do what they did last year and move on. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Kansas City's going to stay. Uh, it's going to have the same fire they had last year, uh, except the, except they come in as a division winner rather than as the as the wild card winner. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I think it's going to be Kansas City in three over Houston. Uh, uh, of course, I'm about to go opposite way f on the Toronto Texas series. Toro uh, Toronto Toronto like I said has caught on fire, but there's one reason why they caught on fire. Tulowetsky when he got traded from the from the rain or from the Rockies to the Blue Jays that sort of that that was the key. Of course he he had some injuries late, but uh, uh, I'm I'm going with the Blue Jays in that in that series. Uh, I think both both uh, I think the Blue Jays will be taking that in four. So I'm, I'm at my a, my ALDS will be uh, Kansas City Toronto. I watch as much American League baseball as I do Charles City in New Hampton. <laughs> I'd probably rather watch Charles City and New Hampton than American League ball, but um, the Astros have done it the right way. They did it like the Cubs did it. They've, they've got a bunch of the uh, sabermetricians and things, and, and they've, had, they've had great drafts. Um, and, and like you said, Kansas City's on the downside right now. So I got the Astros in that one. I really like the Blue Jays. I like with the, the power that they hit with. You mentioned Tulo. Um, Donaldson in the middle of that lineup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've got some pop in there. They've got some veteran people. They signed uh, Russell Barton. This off season, so they've got some veteran people that have been in the playoffs before. I like the Blue Jays. And what do you think about the AL? I like the Astros. You know, Jeff Luno is the former director of, uh, uh, you know, uh, former director of player personnel, I believe, uh, for the Cardinals back in the day, uh, before Mazaloc, you know, uh, took over. Um, you know, I like the Astros. Uh, I got to go with the manager that was born in Waverly, so. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'll take that. I'm not sure how many games they'll win, but I like that club. You know, just like the Cubs, you know, you know, they they led that division virtually the entire you know way. If not, you know, might, might have had a couple of hiccups again. I don't didn't well, get to watch them much. Obviously, I watched the game the other night, but I like Toronto as well. I think Tulowitzki, the addition, you know, I think you know they really just caught fire. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I like I like Toronto and I like Houston. All right, let's uh, start with you on uh, who you think wins the AL pennant. I think I think like in the National League, we talked about the Cubs being a year early. I think the Astros are, are probably one year too yeah. early. I'll go with the Blue Jays. 
I'm going with the Blue Jays too. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about the AL pennant? I think the Blue Jays will win it, but I would like to see Texas. <laughs> <laughs> as a fan, and, as, and for just people in general, I mean, TV ratings too. I mean, people are going to want someone other than the Blue Jays in there. But the Blue Jays have been one of the best teams in the second half of the entire Major League. So it's hard It's hard not to pick them. Okay. Do you think the Cubs can get past the Dodgers, for us, for us three, do you think the Cubs can get past the Dodgers to win the National League pennant for the first time since 1945? Yeah, you know, to me, um, that, no offense to any Cardinals fans out there, because I know everyone will hate this or whatever, but I think a Cubs-Dodgers series is going to be harder than the Cubs-Cardinals, just because of the pitching, um, because they have Kershaw and Granke. Um, but, you know, I can't root against the Cubs, and I just have this feeling that even though it's a year earlier than everyone thought, that they are just playing without pressure, they're playing with fun, and they're playing with unreal confidence. I mean, Jay Garrietta retweeted at some guy before uh, the game the other last night, and they're reminding everyone to wear black for Pittsburgh. And he actually tweeted, you can wear whatever you want, but it's not going to matter. I mean, he, I mean, you never hear players doing stuff like that. But the Cubs are like that. They just know they're going to win. And Madden has instilled that in them. So, uh, you know, I, I, I see probably Cubs Blue Jays in the World Series. Um, I would love to see it to be Cubs the Rangers, just because I think that would be cooler. But uh, that's how it go. Yeah, I'm... Uh, of course, I I, I, I did say uh, the Blue Jays would take the pennant, right? So just just remind me. But uh, um, the a Cubs Dodgers NLC, NLCS is going to be a a lot of fun to watch, especially when you have at the three top pitchers in baseball, not just in the National League in baseball, yeah. going at each other with the. Uh, uh, the Grinky and uh, I can't think of the uh, Hendricks and and uh, Arietta. Uh, the, the that's going to be your top three for the the, the NL Cy Young right there. Uh, Less the, of course it depends on how Lester and Hendricks and and it, if they have the Cubs have a fourth starter for the LCS. Uh, but basically how those those guys will match up in their games. Um, of course if I like I if I call the, how I call it with a sweep, um, we would probably, uh, of course, we uh, might see Lesser again in game one, but if it ends up being four games, we might see Arietta in game one, Lesser against against Grinky, Lesser in game two against Hen uh, against uh, uh, Kershaw. Kershaw, and then and then you would have uh, the then then of course you'd have Hendricks, and then and then probably I might have Heron as your as the as the number four maybe. Uh, or, or they would just go three, uh, like, like have Arietta one, four, and seven. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that the, the, that game for the pennant would go seven. So I'm going Cubs, Cubs, Blue Jays uh, for the World Series. Yeah, and some some of it depends, right, on, on how the first series goes. If we can line up Arietta yeah. like yeah. we want to, but um, you know, I'd say the the, uh, the excuse me, the Dodgers are much deeper on the mound than we are starting pitching wise. Back end of the rotation is better than our H's of Hendricks, Hamill, and Heron. Uh, but that being said, Arietta can certainly do what a Bumgarner did last year. He can take over a series uh, if you can get him two or three times. Um, so you know, I'll go with the hometown uh, bias here and go go Chicago. <laughs> do I need to say? Hey, uh, you, you're probably going to go with the go Cardinals. With the Cardinals over um, the Dodgers. Uh, you know, until Clayton Kershaw can prove that he can crack the Cardinals, but he can crack all other. <laughs> it's still amazing to me. Um, yeah, I like the Cardinals. Uh, who did they pick in the AL Houston? Yeah. yeah for some well, reason, I picked Houston. I'm not sure why. But, uh, you know, Cardinals have been to three or four straight NLCSs. Uh, you know, they would trade with the, with the uh, Giants the last four years, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and the team, every other year, would win the World Series. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Giants are in the postseason this year, but I like the Cardinals. Um, you know, I think you know, they got the right mix of veterans and young guys to do it. Um, again, it's all about staying healthy. You know, it's all about.
Picking the Cardinals at this table, that's the worst pick since you got up this morning and picked that pink polo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I was debating whether to follow it with the pink socks, but I didn't go with the pink <laughs> socks. But hey, I'm just teasing. Ten. One thing that I think will factor into this division series would be the shadows of Bush Stadium. Um, in years with the Dodgers being in the playoffs, they're the late game, the Cardinals are in the early game. It's happened, so I don't know how big it'll be, but there, yeah. there are well, big also, shadows. You know, we also sure. got to think of some of the shadows that Wrigley Field. Right, it, that's it, what I'm saying. Late, the shadows late will play. Early, early you know, evening. they will be a factor, and you know, I think a lot of people have complained about that uh, within each organization that's played each other, not just the Cardinals, but man, you know, especially with the early games because they're a smaller market than say Los Angeles or New York. So mm -hmm. that'd be something else to watch. I think that was one good thing though that having for us as TV schedule to have the Cubs and Cardinals. We're never going to be that noon game or that two right. thirty game. Where I was thinking, like, man, if you're a fan of one of those teams, are you going to take the afternoon off work? Like, what are you going to do? You know. Right. But so the Cubs and Cardinals are usually probably going to be the prime time. You know, games. You know, obviously on the weekends you can play whenever you want. Right. But mm -hmm. during during the work week, uh, we hopefully shouldn't have to worry about trying to figure out a way to watch it during work. So yeah. well, it'd, it'd be more like it be more like dinner time starts. Yeah. Right. All right, so now, of course, uh, uh, we, uh, at least the three three of us, grew up uh, uh, with the uh, the Back to the Future series. <laughs> in the in the beginning of Back to the or near the beginning of Back to the Future two, uh, Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, uh, went went to this year, uh, the twenty uh, the year twenty fifteen from nineteen eighty five. Uh, of course, they experienced the uh, the flying cars and and the hoverboard, but there was also a, a holographic billboard that showed a, a sports update, and the first thing it showed was Cubs win World Series. Of course, it's not going to be an accurate prediction because they said that they would beat Miami, and the Miami Marlins are also in the National League, but. A lot of Cub fans in the spring were were like talking about how this is this is the year because Hollywood said so. So, do you think uh, w will that prediction come true? I am leaning towards maybe. I <laughs> see. See, uh, like I said, we talk about the youth of the Cubs. And, uh, it, of course, uh, the Blue Jays are about in the same about the same boats. But uh, if it ends up being that Cubs Blue Jays series, uh, even though you you have four games possibly in the Rogers Center Sky Dome, uh, I th I think if the Cubs can win one of the two in Rogers Center, they could possibly sweep all three in in Wrigley. I, I'm, I could go Cubs five, and that will be really a a party. If you think if you think the Wednesday night after the Pirates game oh, was a party, yeah. dude, Chicago's going to be a mess. Yeah. I mean, just from watching last night, and that was one bar they showed on TV. But my uh, stepsister, they had the Blackhawks too. Yeah, I know they did. Yeah, yeah with the the the, uh, the banner raising. Blackhawks game. Yeah. yeah. So they have all that going on, but my, my stepsister was in a different bar, and she sent a Snapchat video after they won, and the place was just bonkers. <laughs> I mean, this is that was the first game. I mean, it's the longer this goes, and if they keep winning. Chicago will go ballistic, mm -hmm. and as will many fans across the nation. Just, you know, as, as there's a lot of Cubs fans out there, just because they were always on WGN, right. and everybody who had cable had WGN, and so you you know you watch the Braves or the Cardinals because or the, or the Mets. Yes. Yeah, and the Met, the Mets were <clears throat> Mets were on early cable TV and WOR. Yeah. So I mean, you had those teams that were always on, and so uh, there's a lot of Cubs fans throughout the country just because they grew up, you know, in the days, early days of cable. Uh, if you're around our age or so. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I I I became a full full time fan of the Cubs in 1983 when my parents installed cable. <laughs> Uh, part time because uh, KCRG always showed the yeah, they Cubs, too, showed yeah. the Cubs too on yeah. sun on Sundays. Uh, Back to the Future Part Two. Do you think that'll that'll come come to fruition? You know that we don't have hoverboards, but actually, <laughs> they, 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 I don't know how many things in that. You know, they did get Miami right. The Miami's a team. It wasn't obviously at that time, but they did they did get that right. So this wrong league. You know, I, we don't we don't lace up our shoes with a button. Like they're, they're, they're actually Nike is developing. Are they that. coming up with that? Okay, um, 
So I don't know how many things came Pepsi true. Com Pepsi Complete is coming out on the 21st. Okay, so, so you're saying more and more things are coming out from the movie, so we have to go with the Cubs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'd say 2015 has been a good year for us championship-wise at, at uh, Waverly Shark. Maybe the, Cubs can, maybe the Cubs can continue it, and 2015 we'll get a couple rings. All right, so now, of course, uh, you probably don't think that will come true, but what do you think, the, uh, thinking outside of being a Cardinal, uh, what is what's the percentage chance realistically that that the uh, the that the Back to the Future prediction comes true percentage wise this year? This yeah, the, this year. You need to put me on the spot here. I think this team is is very young and inexperienced. Uh, even with uh, you know a great manager like Joe Madden, you have to experience that. I know they have some guys. Jason Bots won a World Series. Uh, David Ross, uh, John Lester. Lester. Yeah. I think they need one or two more pieces. They need another stud uh, pitcher like Ariana or you know a Lester, that third pitcher mm -hmm. in a rotation, and they need you know a veteran, a savvy veteran, whether it be in the outfield or infield, you know, or in the bullpen. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, to me, trying to think outside the box as a Cardinals fan, uh, or you know, not being a Cardinals fan, I don't know. But I will tell you this: the Cubs are going to be good for a long time. They will win a World Series in the next five years, so if not more. So you're saying they're maybe two guys away? Yeah, I think they're one or two big pieces away. And I'm talking, like, you know, big impact players. If you could clone John Lester or Arietta, that's how, you know, and imagine how dangerous they would be. And, you know, you have to think about the, the things that you can't control, injuries. I don't. Did the Cubs go through a stretch where they experienced a lot of injuries, major really injuries? Did. I mean, Solaire, Solaire was so hurt for a while, but that's... Really about it. Yeah, yeah and, 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 like and, and Baez. Hear about that. Baez, Baez was injured most of the season, but he was he was still in Triple A at the time. But I think this team will grow as a unit. I mean, they're all so young, and it's just fun to watch these kids. You know, you know, going out, you know, taking them guys from Double A. You know, uh, you know, but I, they're going to be fun to watch for a long time, and this division's only going to get better. Yeah, yeah, think about our lack of a number three, a true number three pitcher. And if Edwin Jackson would have panned out like we had all hoped. Mm -hmm. Right now you'd have Jackson as your number three, actually number two in the series. You come back there, you feel much better about that. You talk about another guy with postseason experience. If he'd have panned out, things might be a little different yeah. for us heading into the playoffs. So, uh, and, and so uh, and of course, uh, you mentioned getting a set pitcher. Um, do you think they go after David Price? You know, I don't know. Uh, they definitely have the salary. You know, yeah, they, they, they did it before, you know, when Theo first got, they had to get rid of all of the, you know, just the bad, you know, and start fresh, and he's on the right track. Uh, David Price is a guy that they could go after. You got other guys out there, too. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting winter, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they will add, you know, they were big spenders last year with, with Lester and Arietta. And, you know, I talked to you guys before, but who imagined Arietta this good? He knew he was good, but doing pitch like this, you know. Uh, one thing that I that I would you know will be interesting to see, uh, you know, I know he has a lot of run and whatever, you know. But when he does, and that you know, will he snowball? You know, when he gets down two or three runs and he's still on the mound, how will he react? Yeah, he hasn't faced that since right. April. <laughs> <laughs> actually, 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 his last loss was. Uh, and in July, when uh, Cole, when uh, Cole Hamels uh, threw that no hitter for the Phillies before he got traded to, to the Rangers, so 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 basically, yeah, we had a whole lot of baseball still to come in October. Uh, so just stay tuned, and uh, hopefully, uh, at least for three quarters of this table, uh, the the Cubs can win it all. But no matter what, uh, the future does look look bright for the boys in blue, for West Gady. Uh, Garth Gade, uh, Casey Clunder, and Tyler Puslowski. I'm Eric Van Sickle. We're all talking about this on WaverlyNewspapers.com. There's magic in the ivy in the old scoreboard. The same when I stared at as a kid keeping score. In a world full of greed, I could never want more. And someday we'll go out.